Hello, everyone. Reality Talks with Alex. Today is Friday again, and we are continuing our talks. Today's guest is Martin Christoph. He's a Bulgarian, as I'm a Bulgarian. This is a big um, coincidence, but the thing that unites us is not only that we are like uh, origin from the same country. I'm living in Bulgaria and Greece. He's living in the United States. But anyhow, we are interconnected in the moment uh, through one group that we both participate in. And I'm willing to talk with him today about different topics regarding reality, regarding how we are managing our daily experience. And uh, maybe you can see him, those of you that are seeing our recording and are seeing the live uh, on a Facebook. He likes uh, to read a lot of books. <laughs> and also uh, he's in the moment uh, preparing uh, for launch, as I know, his new book, but it is very interesting for me to know more about uh, his passion and what ignites him and what inspiring to be alive in 2022. So Martin, welcome and just share whatever is important for you. Thank you, Alex. It's always a pleasure to have a great conversation with you because our conversations always goes and who knows where. <laughs> so it's always uh, inspired conversation full of passion. Well, I'm glad to be here and uh, happy to share a lot of wisdom with, with your audience and your platform. So what is important for me nowadays is honestly just at the basis, it comes down to on a day-to-day -day moments, finding or accumulating more evidence of how divinely blessed beyond belief I am or my life is. This is kind of like the fundamental moment to moment thing. So I focus on just enjoying the little and small things in life and acquiring more knowledge when it comes down to connecting a lot of the abstract concepts and fundamental laws that our universe and not just the visible, but the, in the, the invisible sphere of reality which would be the fundamental reality, causes the effects that we experience in life. And since that's kind of like the topic or the idea of the discussion, I'm a seeker of wisdom when it comes down to the cause that creates the effects in our life. So I can become or cause more of the effects I want to see in my life versus the ones that I do not. <laughs> So that's what I'm really passionate about. And uh, it's something that I've always been curious and just looking at how things work and on a very like a fundamental or deeper level, just way beyond what the surface looks like and going deeper and following into the rabbit hole. Yeah. And actually, for how long have you been uh, involved into this explorational work of yours? Well, at this point, it's been many years. Honestly, it's one thing led to the other and so on and so on. But I would say maybe ever since I uh, went to college, like I think that's when like I started to ask deeper question. The book that really like struck, I don't even know how I stumbled upon this book in college, but I read a very fundamental uh, book that I recommend to anybody in the Western world read it's called propaganda it's by edward bernese it's a it's it's a book basically on on manipulation or how language politics and so on is used to manipulate people at scale or like group big groups of people to manipulate public opinion laws and all these type of things and what is fashionable, what isn't fashionable, what is important, what isn't important, what values people should have, and so on and so on. So that was a book that really I already intuitively knew within me that a lot of this so-called social norms are full of crap. <laughs> but I had no like uh, substantial evidence how to like connect it to how the cause that was leading to that effect. And reading that book, it really opened my eyes to how this is performed or what is the cause that creates that effect, which is the social norms and so on and so on. The mechanism used by people in power or people of influence to influence, not in a necessarily positive way, the masses, so to speak. 
So actually, uh, what fascinated you is that actually constantly, daily, there is an agenda that is presented before all of us, the human beings, and we are invited to follow this agenda. Literally, yes, there is always an agenda. If somebody's on TV in a position of power, influence, whatever it is, they're there because they have an agenda. If they didn't have an agenda, they wouldn't be there. It's just how the human ego works. It's always, there is always a reason for every action, meaning that everybody taking an action is always driven by the desire for some return, whether it's financial, whether it's emotional fulfillment, whatever it is, there's always something. Nobody does something in this world without a desire for something in return. Yes, and this is on the conscious and intentional level. And since I'm now very fascinated about the subconscious things that are driving us, do you think that even in the consciously structured agenda of propaganda or whatever it is out there, and a lot of people are just going very strongly into these uh, um, other things that are called... Uh, 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 not secret societies, but all these things that are going into a lot of uh, uh, things that are not seen and are in uh, darkness or in the deep state or whatever. But do you think that also, even in this agenda, there is a subconscious part that is ruling all of this? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. The, the, human, the human psyche fundamentally driven by subconscious programs that were installed there in early childhood. And it's, it takes a lot of years of self-work and self-awareness development for one to be able to start catching themselves up or at least bringing to their conscious awareness what these programs are. So a lot of the times it's these early childhood installed programs, which come from mom and dad, the environment, uh, the news, whatever the, the most uh, influential elements in a child's environment were that installs these, what I call programs. Basically it's a conditioned response. Yeah, and yes. eventually the person is just playing these actions almost on autopilot. So actually, just in the moment while you're in college and a lot of new programs are before you to be installed, <laughs> you saw a deinstallation book, how to deinstall your program. So what exactly happened? <laughs> oh, not necessarily. No, the book is actually it was just like talking from a real perspective because I'm a pragmatic person. I like philosophy, but I like the pragmatic or how, what can you do with philosophy? Because it's great to talk about ideas, but if we cannot put this into practice, into the real world and create the effects again, being the cause of the effects that we want, then it's just an, a, a very nice idea. So I'm very pragmatical in my approach to everything I do. There has to be application. Knowledge without application is what I love to call mental masturbation. <laughs> so <laughs> and i'm not a jerk off so i like to put into practice what i know because again there's a lot of people that talk about a lot of things and they seem very knowledgeable however the fundamental issue is that their life and action does not demonstrate what supposedly they know because it's one thing to know about something it's a whole different story to do, put it into practice or live from that place and be part of your being so what it was in that book, through example, Edward Bernice, the outer, who happens to be a nephew of Sigmund Freud, one of the main you know, fathers of modern psychology out there, talks and gives real world example how he was used, hired by politicians, corporations, and different entities with major agendas to create propaganda that manipulate the public's opinion about various topics, ranging from you know, buying velvet to smoking cigarettes or making it okay for women to smoke cigarettes or what politician to choose and so on and so on. And so through real world examples of how this was done. 
So you see the real application. And at that point, I was like, everything that I so far felt intuitively was off in the world that, that I existed. Now it all aligned. And you can see how it all traces back, you know, 100 or 200 years ago, because this book was written or published in the early 1900s. So it's not some some new information. It's been around for a long time and it actually works because even today it's being used. <laughs> yeah. And actually what this led you to later in life when you realized, okay, there is a strong intention of work. How then you deepen your experience after you realize that there is something that is happening, so to say, behind the scene and how you involved yourself into creating your own agenda, so to say. Well, no, I completely hear you. Yeah, but, well, basically, I become a lot more curious about the things I wasn't uh, well aware of, whether it was, some, as you said, secret societies. I won't call them secret, right? Everything that you don't know of, that you don't know of right now is a secret, <laughs> generally speaking. And that's the problem. We don't know what we don't know until we figure out that we don't know about something. Then we can... If we're curious enough, or we have the means, the times, and so on, we can learn about them and then we can put them into practice and so on. But so I became aware of a lot of the things that I, in for, through that book, about the environment and the world we live in. So I became a lot more curious about what other <laughs> things that I don't know that are influencing directly my life or the environment I was living or the society or the mindset and the beliefs and so on, because I've always been like uh, someone who doesn't fit or take on social norms very easily. I like to have my own take on things. I, I feel like intuitively and philosophically, I have a very good base to create my own values, beliefs, and so on and so on. And that has served me very well because I don't need to buy into somebody's belief, for example, you know, Santa Claus. No, it's it's kind of fun. We all bought into Santa Claus when we were children. If you had a, you know, a healthy childhood upbringing, hopefully you all did. But Point being, you know, there's good ideas that last temporarily, and then there are a lot of bad ideas that keep on, on and on and on, and nobody's even questioning or asking, right? So I just start keep on asking, questioning, and just putting through my filter, or so to speak, like system, all these beliefs, all these mindsets, all these standards, all these values, all these social levels of programming that are what I call eventually, you know, led me to my work, what I do nowadays, which all really comes down to one thing, the our conditioning is our lifetime sentence, meaning however we've been conditioned is how we're going to be for the rest of our life, how we're going to see the world, how we're going to think about the world, the meanings we're going to create, and so on and so on and so on. And until we bring this up to our conscious awareness and see what really works for us and what doesn't, we are literally in prison. Because again, a lot of what we do, what we think, what we feel, all these things is habitual and is subconscious or unconscious. It's something that never comes up into our conscious awareness. And the world we live in nowadays is so, so busy and overstimulated. Our, our senses are overstimulated, right? You have the phone notifications, all the rest of the thing, everything is busy, no, busy, busy. What you're saying that actually, why are we are thinking that everything is just uh, towards us or attacking us on the conscious level actually it's quite the opposite everything is influencing us on the subconscious level that's why we even cannot feel it or understand it because if we understand this type of propaganda we're not going to allow it but when it comes to the subconscious we actually even <laughs> doesn't see it how it comes into us Exactly. It sips on many, many levels. And it's on that subconscious level that we get programmed all the time. 
Here's the thing. Human beings are programmable by design. And what I mean human beings is the human psyche. And that's what matters because all human behavior is driven through the psyche on the subconscious level. And we constantly, in each and every moment, being programmed or influenced by our environment. Whether it's the music we are listening to, the people we are associating with, the news we are watching, whatever, everything is influencing us on that subconscious level. And it's funny what could be done once you realize neural plasticity and how the human brain works to engage it and to input things that you're not even aware of whether it's through specific frequencies, whether it's through drop frames that you don't consciously perceive, but your subconscious mind is picking up. There's so many things that could be done. It's, it's, it can blow your mind the deeper you go into the rabbit hole of how many ways there are to, to strengthen this influence that the environment has on that subconscious level, because that's the key. The subconscious mind has no filter. On a conscious level, we can say, oh, I, I like this, I believe in this, and so on and so on. The subconscious mind has no filter. It just takes it all in. It's like a sponge. Whatever you pour on it, it'll soak it in. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and I have some explanation or some understanding that I've created for myself. Uh, so actually, one idea is to take this fast food, these ready meals, or the other possibility and ability as you have taken it in your own personal experience is to become the cook of your own <laughs> subconscious feeding, so to say. Absolutely. You have to be eventually, yeah, eventually. And then you start to uh, create and to develop this interest into the ingredients. Ah, so what are the ingredients? How is the cooking made? What exactly can I cook? Why I cannot do it alone? Why should I take this ready uh, offer to me fast food things that are not creating these fast food programs, so to say, that are maybe some of them short term benefit, but long term, I'm becoming a dependent person. I, that's, this is a great analogy. Absolutely. That's the very simple way to look at it. Obviously, yeah. there is a lot of great information out there or programs or ideas or ingredients that somebody has prepared, right? And people who had the right values, the right motivation and so on that were in integrity, right? Mm -hmm. When they created them and shared them. So it's not because they had an agenda for their own well-being or a selfish agenda. They had a greater good agenda and they shared it. So there's a lot of great information out there that is very positive, right? Same ingredients, different programs and different meals can be created. So once we see that something is working in a negative way, it doesn't mean that we are to reject it only, but we can see, aha, so with these ingredients, actually I can create something that is wonderful and beneficial for me and for the society. And don't go into this uh, rabbit hole of the, uh, secret societies and just blaming and saying that everything can go, go and do, uh, doom and gloom, but to actually start creating a totally different realities for all of us. Because all the human beings, we have the access to all the ingredients. Well, for, for the most part, we do. For the most part, we do. In a sense, like in the Western world or developed countries with the internet and so on and so on, we do. There are certain people that, you know, lack the, the access to information or if it's information, whether, you know, through books or the internet or whatever, they probably lack the, the great examples, people that can share with them that knowledge, a mentor or a teacher or somebody. So there are certain pockets in the world where this is still lacking, but little by little, this this won't be the case as the world evolves and unfolds. But the, the way I look at it is there is no ideally good or bad things in this universe. We, we revolve in a world of duality or er everything is relative. We can always choose to see the positive, the negative, both, whatever. It doesn't matter. Everything always have 
a bad or a negative and a positive side. There's no such thing as perfection or ideally good or ideally bad. Everything is both. It's how we choose or to first view it, what we're going to find out or what's the first thing that's going to pop out in our conscious awareness, right? And that's how you can know how you've been conditioned. Whether you first notice the negatives or you first notice the positives. That's a fundamental level of conditioning there. If you become aware of this and you just bring this to your awareness that you always, no matter what happens in life, you always see the negative, what's missing, what's not out there, uh, whatever it is, that's on a fundamental level is a level of condition, right? I've, I've consciously... Actually, as you're saying, the categories or the content has different categories. So if we see the content only from the one side, we say, yeah, this is 100% negative. But if you look it from all the direction, the same content can be positive and negative, and it has different categories. So the, the, Yeah, the way I like to put it is, depending on your desired outcome, mm -hmm. things can be highly effective and highly ineffective. Specific content, application, ingredient, whatever label we want to use here is going to be highly effective in specific circumstances or contexts and highly ineffective in other. So you have to be first very clear on what the desired outcome or the effect that you want to cause. And then you can choose what tool is going to enable you to cause the desired effect. Right? Yeah. So uh, you don't create a recipe before before you have the end result that you want to. Uh, to well, I won't say you you won't have the result. Although if you had the result, you won't need to to have the recipe. It's you being clear on what the the outcome is for you, mm. right? Because then this just to kind of expand on the idea of conditioning here is like most people focus on what they do not want to happen. Right. And that's again comes from this fundamental level of conditioning. What do you see first? What is all like the positive side and what's there, or what's or all the negatives and what's missing? Based on that fundamental, like binary conditioning, good or bad, right? You're gonna be either always thinking about or imagining <laughs> what you want to happen or what you don't want to happen. And if you focus on what you don't want to happen, what you're going to create is run the program or find the program that's actually going to create in your life exactly that, which you don't not want to happen because the mind, the human mind does not process negation. It doesn't understand not, do not, I don't want to, and all these kind of things. It actually leads you to this. A simple example is how racing drivers drive or yeah. how anyone who wants to be a spirited driver or motorcycle rider or whatever can train himself so he can be better on track or any situation. You always look where you want to go because the moment you start looking where you don't want to go, you end up there. So if that's the ditch, you're going to end up in the ditch right? You always look not where your car is or where the wheel is, you will look throughout the next corner, right? So it's looking where you're going, not where you don't want to go. Yeah, and uh, because I'm driving uh, sport cars and from time to time I'm at the speedway and I experience it this uh, in my life and uh, it is very hard for me uh, I look very close when I'm driving the car and it's so hard for me to look further down and to look at the most uh, uh, possible uh, position, which is up front. To look as far away as possible, it's so hard, but actually more I train myself to look further, it's much, much more easy to do the things that are close to me. And if I uh, put the focus on the things only which are close to me it becomes paradoxically more difficult to drive 
Yeah, what happens is in my personal experience, so if you focus here, especially in the driving situation, using this as a metaphor or as an analogy, what becomes your very focus on the step right now, and you might execute this thought very well, but what's going to happen the next three corners or the next three steps, gonna you're going to set yourself to fail. And it's usually it comes down to flowing being able to flow in a very uh, not choppy way, so to speak, in order to, to be faster. Yeah, but the problem, uh, the problem the human beings have is that when they focus very close, in the closer probabilities, there is much more clarity and the mind is more relaxed. And when you focus further away, you cannot see so clearly there. And then your mind start becoming conscious about, well, uh, how can I participate since I don't get information? Uh, where is the driver? <laughs> Who is the driver? Yeah. Then? I'm a driver when everything I have all the information. And that's why when we are driving these uh, fast uh, cars and uh, the trainer is saying to us, you don't drive with your mind, you don't drive with your hands, you drive with your butt. Yeah, with your feeling, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. feeling where you at yeah, you and what the car is doing. You need to fill the car with your butts and with your goods, actually. From there is where the driving is coming. And it was very fun thing for me. Yeah, well, that, you know, looking from that perspective, yeah, we, as, again, as human beings, we have a psyche. And the fundamental number one need all humans have on the psychological level is this, is this certainty safety, whatever label you want to put, just kind of knowing what to a, a high degree that tomorrow you're going to wake up, that you're going to have food, you're going to have shelter over your head and so on and so on. So on the fundamental level, when we speaking psychologically, this is like the fundamental block. Every well, you know, psychologically uh, balanced person is going to have. However, one thing is for sure, and it's the only certain in the whole universe, and that is change. We cannot control how things will be from a moment to moment. All we can do is to learn to control how we respond from choice versus react to the stimulus in our environment because Going back to the point of conditioning, if we are unconscious about our conditioning, there's, you can think of it as there's all these little buttons on us. And whatever happens in our environment is going to trigger this conditioning that we have. And we're going to replay this, take this action, say this thing, and so on and so on that might not necessarily be ideal or optimal in the situation. And we're going to end up Again, where we were before wishing or like talking shit at ourselves as like, oh, like I did this again and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And it's all basically operating from zombie or <laughs> computer or like, like a little robot, right? Because we all have conditioning. And the more of this conditioning we can become aware of, the more we can start to shift the way we respond to the environment. Yes. And so actually we are long term, uh, we need to disidentify ourselves from the programs we are running daily. You well, know? that that's on, on a much deeper level, absolutely. To get to what we truly are, the reality, to, to get to the point of reality, to mm -hmm. we definitely not just design identify, but create the distinction between who and what we are and where these programs come in. Because everything that we're experiencing through the human body, which is the vehicle for our reality, the real self, is conditioned. The side of the sleep, we, uh, the side of the bed we sleep, the way we sleep, the way we brush our teeth, the, the, every single thing in this body, the way it likes to go to sleep and so on and so on and like, Everything is, is so conditioned. It's such a habit. It's unbelievable. If you bring or make an effort, because again, we are so bombarded with stimulus throughout the day nowadays, right? There is 
all the scrap everywhere, whether it's you, you go to, to the store to buy coffee or you turn on the radio, whatever. So there is all of our conscious awareness is constantly occupied by stimulus or what I like to call distractions. And very little can we focus consciously or concentrate to observe ourselves from above, so to speak, from a third person perspective, un, uh, unopinionated, not from a perspective of, am I looking good? Am I looking bad? Am I this or that? But just like a third person and like almost like, a, like you're uh, shadowing yourself all the time and you're completely aware of what what patterns you're running yeah i, I call this uh, to sit in the driving observational seat every morning you wake up you open your eyes and you go and sit in your driving observational seat and start moving through the day <laughs> because if our, our body and our five senses are part of the vehicle then it's better for us the real one to actually be at the right position <laughs> instead of being just somewhere where the engine is or where the deep feeling of the engine we can really feel it very strongly down there but we cannot observe if we are strongly into the emotion for example absolutely because where we begin is where all that ends like in reality and it's very hard to, to reach that point the, the realized spiritual masters, and they are just to for everybody listening, they're masters. They are not masters of me, you, and anything else. They're masters of themselves. This is when somebody becomes a master. They have mastered themselves. And what I mean by self is not just the body, but every dimension of the human experience or a condition. They've mastered it all. And what they do, these highly advanced yogis, uh, spiritual masters, mystics, or whatever term you want to use for that, is they're able to shut off even their hearts. They're so advanced in their capabilities to control the vehicle that they can shut off the heart. Analogy would be if you're in a, using, if this is my car, I can turn off the engine. Mm -hmm. And if I turn off the engine, I can shut off all the senses that bring distraction and noise in my environment or distract me from what I am in my real essence. So I can really perceive this and be with it and live from that place. Yeah, that's great. And actually uh, from your college years, how you started to decondition yourself and de-learning how you are great you need first to deinstall programs before you install new ones or how you're doing because i've heard about different techniques i personally do it through a lot of personal exploration and just uh, willingness to understand i am de-learning myself for the last maybe 15 years from almost everything that i know and i'm asking more and more fundamental questions because for me the big aha was when I realized that actually the truth is hidden in the obvious and that everything that we ignore and everything that we don't even want to notice, there is actually the uh, beautiful things, the interesting things of uh, life. It's beyond the surface and behind the surface, so to say. No, absolutely. Another way, I guess, to, to put it in my words would be once you start to see the magic in everything, lives become magical. But prior to this, if you that they just get caught up in the trivialities, in the obvious to the senses things, you don't really see the magic behind it all. Magic is everywhere. Everything is magic. Everything is alive. It's we just our senses are so limited in their perception that we cannot see the magic happening in each and every single moment. Right. So for me, I guess the, the learning process or what I would call the uh, re, I wrote over, re, like wrote over the programs or like if I was to use a vinyl record as a as an analogy, I kind of like scratch, scratch, scratch over the, the, the old uh, channels 
and created new ones over it. And it all that it really at that stage of life, once you once we pass it early one to seven years of age, when the brain is in a very particular brainwave and frequency operational stage where it's very flexible and it takes on all these ideas very easily. That's why we get the majority or the fundamental chunk of this conditioning is installed <laughs> at that stage. It all comes down to repetition, 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 and it takes will because a lot of the times you have to will yourself to do things that go against the grain or the habits that you already have, that are, you already have the inertia, right? It's very easy to like just follow, almost like it's effortless to do what you used to doing. And it's really, really hard to will yourself to do what's different from that. So like in the vinyl, instead of just going into those tracks of the vinyl uh, plate, just to, rewire into the new tracks that are little by little created pretty much yeah to just lift the thing and uh dr drop it all on a new one that i just like kind of scrapped into so to speak and little by little it's, it takes consistency and takes persistency the reality is such that we the world we exist in no matter what we set as a goal always going to take time, effort, sweat, blood, and tears, whatever you, however you want to put it into words, right? It's going to, it's, you're only going to get achieve a mean or a goal that you deserve that's worthwhile by merit. You have to earn it. Mm. It doesn't matter what success you're after, right? So it's always going to take effort. It's not going to be something that you're going to wake up to one day without putting the effort. Or in other words, if you're a farmer, mm. to use this analogy, unless you plant seeds, you take care of them, you water the plants eventually once the seeds sprout, and so on and so on and so on, a year later, depending what the normal cycle of this plant that you're growing is, you're not going to get any fruits or return on your farming efforts, right? You need to plant the seeds and you need to take care of your land and your plants and so on in order to bear the fruit or enjoy the fruits of your labor, so to speak. Mm. So from the vinyl perspective and this uh, uh, analogy, if uh, it's not touching the surface, the vinyl is not touching the surface, the music cannot start. The magic of the music is not happening. So the effort is when we have this connection between the vinyl and the playing of the music. Well, that would be one way to put it, or let's say since the new growths that we're creating on the groove, they're not as deep as the old ones because the old ones, they are very deep. So it's very easy once you drop the needle to follow in it, those new ones are so shallow that it's very easy just for the motion for the needle to jump off and get back to the old track. So we just keep on digging deeper, keep on digging deeper. That's where the repetition comes in. We just strengthen or deepen or expand a little groove. So eventually it becomes easier for our <laughs> subconscious mind to fall into that groove versus the, the one we don't want to follow any longer. Yeah, and there is very interesting for me because uh, when we speak about our shadow part or the old tracks that we had, they actually will always stay on our vinyl plate, so to say. So when we are uh, thinking that we are changing or that we are becoming something new or we're transformed, into something that we have never been, it doesn't mean that the old psyche is not possible and it's not there because all the old tracks are there. Just with, as you say, we're putting the needle on the new tracks. So still these imperfection of parts of us, my expressions of 20 years ago, these tracks are still there, but I'm now just playing in my vinyl with the needle on a new tracks that are just producing new experience for me and in this way we never can say well this was something bad now i'm changed now i'm something good no we are the same vinyl plate 
Well, we are in, in, in like a compilation of all these things, absolutely. Yeah. However, over time, from at least in my personal experience, because I can only judge by through my own personal experience, because clearly I cannot be in your mind or your body to really on that level feel what's going on and how things are on your end. But over time, I've noticed that certain, for example, real world example, something i've trained myself because we all are we just again we've been conditioned to have a, a preferred or dominant hand which in most people is the right hand it's rare, rare that i see people that are lefties even though they are however just like our ancestors or ancient so to speak cousins primates we are ambidextrous meaning we can use both of our hands as capably as equally capable without any difference like i'm better with using my right hand versus my left hand you can train yourself like i've done this over the years but what i've noticed now like after doing it for many many years to live you use my left hand now i'm always become it almost has become with certain things that i haven't really done for a long time with my right hand it almost feels like it's my how my left hand was <laughs> that makes sense it's kind it's kind of weird but it, at the same time it's like you see how over time it's not immediate it takes years to get to that point but again it's much easier because the old grooves are already there to, to use this analogy there's just dust over them so I can just sweep over the dust. The grooves are already there, so it'll be very easy to start following them again. But I'm just noticing in my personal experience how on that like fundamental level, you know, you can start feeling like, oh, my right hand now feels like and my left was like three years ago, something like that. Mm. Yeah, it is uh, uh, interesting. And uh, for example, uh, how do you, have a perception for change and for progress in the reality and do you compare yourself because there is a lot of speaking and talking about the future self the better self and so on and so on but uh, according to you are you doing such type of comparisons and how do you actually follow a progress and, and is a progress also just an imaginational construct? <laughs> well, I won't call it imagination because on our plane of existence that our senses bring up into our aware, con conscious awareness, things are gradual. It's very rare where things happen immediately. It has to be a very high level of, uh, of spiritual being being involved to precipitate something like in a snap of fingers. It, it really it's gradual because we exist in a dimension revolving around space and time. And these are two constructs that we cannot escape if as long as we operate on this physical plane. We're always going to be constrained by time and space. So everything, because we play in this like material field where everything is so dense, so to speak, mm -hmm. in our perception and experience, there's always going to be a gradual unfoldment. Now, if we are to step back or lift ourselves beyond this field and we go to, to the field of energy, things are very immediate. They don't take a long time at all. But that for a normal person who hasn't reached a certain level of illumination, so to speak, or spiritual practices and so on, this is very hard. It's pretty much impossible because they are unaware and incapable to operate on that level. And so they're limited to this paradigm here, revolving around space and time. So things going to take time, things going to be gradual, and so on and so on. And to answer your question, the way I know I'm making progress, I don't compare myself daily because daily comparison on that personal level development, like when we're speaking about something we're transforming within ourselves, is very hard to measure or count as we can measure, let's say, if we walked 100 steps today or 120. 
These are a lot easier things to break down and measure and so on because they're scientific devices that or technology allows us to do it in a very uh, simple way that doesn't require for us to really waste any, any concentration or conscious awareness to be conscious of. How I measure this is how, where, or how much has this new, let's say, habit or ritual or way of being, how much of it is becoming an automatic thing I do in my life versus what I was doing before, right? How easy it is to happen automatically because the key is to, to become part of your being or it's something that's automatic now. You don't have to consciously will yourself to do. So we actually, you measure how much of your unconscious you consciously express in a sense. Kind of, kind of, because the key is to make it, you consciously choose what you want unconsciously to express. <laughs> if that makes sense. You consciously choose, then you install the program and then you let the unconscious run it for you. Yeah. yeah that's so that's how I, I uh, measure where I'm in the process, right? How much will does it take? Because once something is taken by the unconscious and now it's running as a program, it doesn't take any will to, to do. It... So then you are in the zone, then you are in this so-called effortless living. Uh, well, I won't call it effortless, right? Be you could be, you certainly can be for a lot of things, but you know, if you're someone like I am, who always pushing the envelope of what is possible physiologically, psychologically, and all these kind of things, you always have challenge. You, have, you challenge yourself. You always stretch your comfort zone. You don't, you know, linger in the comfort zone. Like the comfort zone yesterday was yesterday. Today, we're going to stretch it to something else and go in further. But you certainly can create a life. However, that leads to stagnation. Mm -hmm. And everything in nature that is not actively growing and expanding is starting to stagnate, which leads to decay. So actually, as more as more of your subconscious you're expressing, as more as more you consciously need to challenge yourself in order your consciousness to not be uh, disintegrated into the subconscious, but to continue to be conscious about new challenges and new borders where you can still stay consciously aware of things that are still not subconscious for you so you're furthering your subconscious then your consciousness need to go into new borders and new challenges in order to be still conscious is it something like a competition between the two in a sense that both of them wants to do their job well, I wouldn't say it's a competition. It's more creating a very uh, elaborate collaboration between them, like mm -hmm. a harmonious collaboration where no longer your subconscious is something almost like, uh, like as you said, like the shadow side. It's no longer a shadow side. It's part of who you are. It's like the yin and yang in the in the in the Asian. Uh, I'm not sure what culture brings it, but I think it's maybe from Buddhism or Chinese and so on. The black and the white little fish looking things that merge into each other right? It's integrating both because without darkness, we would never know what light is. And without light, in our perception as humans, we'd never know what darkness is. So they are interplaying with each other all the time. It's integrating them in a very holistic and healthy way. That's what my approach is all about in my teachings and so on. It's all holistic integration. Yeah. yeah. Instead of that means, for example, uh, the moon and the sun uh, in a lot of these uh, religious teachings or this uh, type of thinking, it's that lecturer, the sun and the moon, they're like uh, always chasing each other in the sense that the sun is responsible for the conscious and the moon for the subconscious part. And there are some type of interpretations and correlations. But the thing is that your conscious and subconscious are always just moving forward into the new boundaries that you're creating because your new comfort zone is what 
the subconscious is now very easily doing and your new conscious is going into the new zones it need to create the new path so that subconscious can also go forward and maybe this is part of the progress process that, that that's a great way to put it that's absolutely a great way to put it where you're on the conscious level with the conscious awareness you have to be driving the ship into the unknown waters you, to use this analogy because the subconscious can only operate in the known or what it knows. It's never going to step onto the outside because it's kind of like if it had no program that it can run outside of that. Like if you, the code is written just to keep it in that little box, which revolves into, let's say, 100 by 150 by 150 pixels. And it's just going to crawl within, crawl within, crawl within, but never step out. Mm. So it's the conscious that drives, the uh, that brings the un uh, unconscious or subconscious into that new field that is still unknown. Mm -hmm. And so actually we are playing the programs through the subconscious while the conscious is creating the new programs and these new boundaries and new challenges where later the subconscious is going to play. So one part of us is constantly creating the new boundaries where later the subconscious we need to let go through our authenticity to freely express itself itself so in some way well i would say there's two ways to look at it right again we live in a relative world there is duality there's no ideally good or bad you always have to be at the end of the day the more your level of consciousness evolves the more you evolve the more aware you want to be of yourself in each and every given moment. Because there's still a lot of layers of, of conditioning. Many, many, many layers. There's so many to it. It's, it's like if you were to start to make a list, we won't have a list long enough. Because the moment you realize this conditioning, it brings up to what this conditioning is. And it's, it's, it's just this rabbit hole that has no end. But the point being is you definitely like this, uh, no ideally good. There's no perfection on this plane of existence. The moment you get comfortable and you allow yourself to get sucked into that comfort is when you're going to start seeing things showing up in your life, not the way you want them to be, because basically this is the system, the greater system pushing you to expand, to evolve, because one of the fundamental, I don't call it laws, but it's motion, momentum, that it, movement that is happening through the, whole, through the whole universe is evolution. Now, you can choose intentionally to evolve spiritually, because there's very little we can do to evolve physiologically through our intention. Yeah, we can go in the gym and so on and so on, but the most control we have is on the spiritual level or energy level, the things that we can do within, not so much on the outside. Or if we don't do it intentionally, the environment will do it and propel us to do it, but on a very slow pace, which follows a very like uh, jagged kind of line. And it's going to create circumstances challenges and obstacles in our life that we don't necessarily need to face if we are to do it intentionally in a designed way, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Because everything in, in, in our universe, if we look at it, no matter how far we can go back, whether it's our planet, whether it's through all the galaxies and the universe has constantly from its very beginning to this point, evolving and continue to evolve. This is, this is part of the game. It's a fundamental law and process that is nobody can change. It's part of the laws. It's always going to evolve. Now, whether you want to sit down and get left behind and wait for the bus to come in, or like the driver of the bus to come kick you in the ass so you can hop on the bus <laughs> or somebody to throw you in the bus or kind of like a, ba a bag of t tomatoes or like, potatoes in the back of a pickup truck and kind of like take you for a ride that's up to you right yeah. then actually you are saying that the humanity is constantly evolving the consciousness 
Absolutely. Not, not just the consciousness, physiologically speaking as well. Yeah. Not just humanity, everything. Every single little atom or particle that exists in the soul universe. The, the complexity of the galaxies and so on. Everything is constantly evolving and teach, until it reach a state where it has fully expressed its potential. Okay. And then yeah. it, This is what I'm calling work in progress. Everything is constantly work in progress from the beginning because we think that creation means it is done. But actually, if we think for creation or for existence from the perspective that, as you are saying, it's always evolving or it's always work in progress and in constantly transforming, then we understand that everything is motion and uh, evolving, yeah. This well, this motion, what you're saying right now is absolutely really what it truly is. Like that motion is what keeps this creation existing in this moment. This is what we call reality, the physical matter reality that we can see, perceive and so on and so on and feel like it's the reality we exist in. The moment that motion stops, this whole thing withdraws back to its zero state. It kind of like if it, if it expanded, using what science says was the, the moment of creation, the Big Bang idea from out of nothing, this whole universe over billions and billions of years has expanded and so on and so on. It will do the exact opposite. Like if a huge vacuum just sucks it all in and it will all withdraws to nothingness, the moment that motion stops. So when that evolution reaches its full potential, all will withdraw back to a state where it's kind of going to be recycled and this is going to start again. And this is what, again, the, put it this way, the realized spiritual masters call the breadth, mm. the breadth of God. Okay. It's like an inhale and exhale, an inhale and exhale, but the, the, the periods of time this inhale and exhale takes is not like in our human terms in our human terms this will be billions and billions of years mm. yeah this is interesting <clears throat> yeah so actually uh i like now to speak not to speak but i started to think in a new way when i look at the human psyche and um, the human development because i personally don't like a lot the personal development that is working normally on the surface or the mindset coaching which is working with the mind primarily and that's why i'm very strongly proposing the so-called mindset heart set good set <laughs> development <laughs> what about butt set <laughs> gut set butt set yeah it, it's the same because you see uh i'm strongly now learning myself to work with intuition i don't want to know when i'm doing my decisions if i feel it inside my guts i just do it and most of the times then through my perception and through my understanding i see that what is starting to review for me because of the decision i took based on no understanding on no perception is actually so wonderfully made for me uh yeah i have a sim uh, example and that's why i um, had a talk about the boredom because uh when i go into this boredom zone when I don't know what to do. I don't put the intention. I'm not consciously doing whatever. Just I go into the stillness again. Then I receive like this contraction and the inhaling and this. Uh, I, I feel this rhythm because when I go again in stillness, in just total surrender, then once again, new wave of inspiration is coming for me from nowhere i haven't created it it's not part of my intent it just comes from nowhere well that 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 is exactly how the system works here is the thing there are two ways we can operate in this world the first one is one the one that everybody is most familiar 
with, which is the ego will, like my will be done. Like my ego, like I have this idea, now I'm going to force it on the world, right? Like I don't want to change, I'm going to change the world. To fit me. So I, I'm, I'm going to go and force myself on the world so I can create this desire, right? Whatever that desire is. It could be to be a president, uh, like a gold medalist athlete, the richest man or a woman in the world, whatever it is, doesn't matter what it is. This is selfish ego driven agenda. Now, the second advanced state of operation is for, for people who have evolved their consciousness to a certain degree. They become vehicle or channel for thy will or God's will, or creating thy divine will to manifest. Because at the end of the day, we here, at least human beings, just like animals, we are here to play a certain role in this, uh, let's put it this way, this uh, long-term or long-form movie that or series that God has created called the universe and its current manifestation. So there is a certain role we can play, certain expression we can have in this in this movie and we can choose to take instruction from the divine director <laughs> we can egocentrically and selfishly we can be like i don't like this input right or i'm not gonna be the the, the channel for that i'm gonna create my own because i think i know better than this divine omnipotent expression that has created this whole universe and beat my heart when i go to sleep <laughs> and keeps me alive without me having to know how this whole system of trillions of cells actually work together because this is not one body this is a community of trillions of cells that cooperate on such a high level that whenever you have what we what we call what we see as competition you have cancer and it starts to fall apart right so there's it, it, such a level of intelligence of creation of the like just omnipotence that puts it all together that if you make yourself if you're willing to to build the trust and to have the faith to trust in this divinity to express through you and just follow what it says for you to do your life is gonna unfold in the most exceptional way possible Nothing that you ego can wish for, desire, think of, whatever match the divine expression has in store for you. It's as simple as that. Because our human mind operates in a very, very limited paradigm, which is all the crap we acquire through the senses, right? Because there's no other way for us to at least based on the current state of technology and so on and so on to acquire information or new experiences or exposure to anything but through the five senses and our five senses are extremely limited all you have to do is go in nature and look at the specific highly advanced senses that animals have that we don't and they, they can see hear, taste smell and you know, experience the world around us in a way that to us would be like if you were on a different planet altogether. And, and have you heard about this uh, analogy where actually everything we look with the five senses, we are actually with the five senses not moving forward, but it is like a boat. And actually with the five senses, we are looking backwards, how the backwards and the history is just moving and drawing forward but from the perspective of the of the past and actually the movement is in the totally opposite direction it's like when you're in a boat with the five senses actually constantly you are looking the past and your intuition and your subconscious or even the divine will or whatever is actually looking constantly caring for your future have you heard about this analogy no, not, 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 not yet, but it's a great one. But that's really how it works because it takes the brain, even if it's a snap, one hundredth of a thousand of a second to process this information and to create this meaning that we have this experience, right? So whatever we are perceiving right now is already old. 
Mm. It's something else already <laughs> what actually it is. So our perception of what is is already old of what it actually is. And there's, again, this constant movement of unfoldment of, the, of just moving this, this motion picture that we call reality forward. Mm. Just like on the movie is, there's always the next frame and the next frame and the next frame and the next frame and so on and so on and so on. And there's, we have, clearly we have control to a certain degree, because it's not just me, it's not just you. There's so many entities with high level of consciousness that one way or another can put scenes or like uh, modify scenes or the scenario based on their input. But that doesn't happen here and now, me trying to change things as they are. It happens in the different space, uh, space or plane of existence, which Again, the, the advanced spiritual practitioners or called esoterics uh, masters call the plane of causality or where the mental plane where ideas and so on first are created and then eventually they are manifested or trickled down into physical manifestation. Mm. So actually... The question there is what is uh, beyond mind and what is beyond ideas before ideas become ideas in this causality there are forces that are like uh, before the ideas it is like uh, some type of an essences in the field of probabilities where everything can come close to you but then what exactly is going to come into your realm to spot specific probabilities, it is part of this design movement of how your reality is going to play for you, in a sense. Because, of course, we can only be aware about what is coming close to us. We cannot uh, even know that everything has, is even part of the probabilities. Because if uh, I ask you, for example what is in the moment impossible, even when you start giving the definitions for impossible, it means that it is of your, in your realm of probabilities. But what about everything we even cannot give in the moment definitions for? It still exists out there. It's still not in our existence, even in qualified as impossible. Because if we start even qualifying it there, it is still reachable. It's part of the realm of exploration. Well, the, this this is a whole different loaded like uh, another loaded question, right? Because here is the thing: if if we are to look at again scientific take on how the universe was created, if this whole universe, immense universe with billions, if not trillions, of galaxies that have billions and trillions of stars, and blah 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 blah, and then we us and everything else on our planet have started from nothing, from a zero state of like, think of it as not even an atom size thing or a pin of the, the head of a, uh, of a pin and expand it to what it is, then how can anything be impossible? I mean, it just doesn't make even sense. Like if you think about it, if this whole universe scientifically science say that it started from nothing and now it's what it is, what is impossible? Is there such a thing as impossibility? There is. <laughs> Let me give you the answer. That there is, and that is only on the psychological level for the individual themselves, whatever they believe to be impossible for them. Yeah, and this is what I'm calling uh, the limitations of reality because I, I, I have created this model that we, the beings, are limitless insight as potential as probabilities it doesn't matter if you are aware or not but constantly daily through our reality we are experiencing limitations and as more as more of this limitless being we are expressing less and less limitations we are experiencing but these limitations are part of 
what we can perceive as uh, possible or impossible. These borders of limitations are just creating this feeling of impossibilities. Otherwise, they don't exist, actually. I don't know if uh, it's possible long term to evolve into such a state that you constantly feel the probable of everything and you can even not feel the any limitation. Well, you certainly can, but I'm going to try to simplify this as much as possible because it's a very abstract, uh, I would say a concept, but true. Mm -hmm. How we perceive reality through the five senses is how we always going to perceive it. Our sense of sight are not going to allow us to see anything different than what we are able to see. It's as simple as that. They have their limitations. They have the design that function in this physical reality. As long as we exist in a relative dimension, we're always going to have limitations. The fundamental two being, again, space and time. There's always going to be limitation. When you, like, you either going to have one of the limitations is if you want to be there, but you hear now the limitation is the space and the time it's going to take, right? Mm -hmm. So as long as we are operating in this field of physical matter and we're using the five senses in the human mind or the conditioned ego mind, we can only operate, exist, and experience what we think is a reality in this paradigm. We can never pierce through the veil, so to speak, or have another way to operate. The only way to start operating in different ways for us to start tapping into our inner self or the true essence to develop this spiritual energetic being of ourself and operate in that space because only once we can operate from that space we can i would say we're always going to have no matter how advanced you are as a spiritual master whether it was uh, the christ jesus or any of those manifested masters that came after or pre or prior and so on and so on, as long as you're going to take on a human body, you're always going to have limitations that apply to physical matter that is revolving in space and time. You cannot escape this. The only way you can is like if I was, for example, there, there's the Indian manifested master what they referred as avatar mahavatar babaji who's been living for thousands of years and some advanced spiritual seekers or the people out there and mystics when they go to certain area of the himalayas over the centuries have met him and he has spoken to them and manifested in human form but not in the like you can see him as a hologram, but he's not taking on an actual physical body because the moment you take on a physical body, you're limited. It, you cannot, <laughs> it's kind of like, if you want to play with Legos, you can only like, you have to play with the Legos. You cannot like, if you want to paint something or sketch it on a piece of paper, the way it's done, like if you want to create a castle with Legos, you have to build the Lego blocks, right? And they're very limited in what you can do. But if you want to create it with a pen and pencil, your ability and fluidity and how long it's going to take probably is going to be much simpler. Mm, yeah, but uh, on paper, it is going to be two-dimensional. With Lego, you cannot create a nice sphere and yeah, th these limitations. But this is why when I go for the perception that anyhow... If we are limitless, we don't need why we are experiencing here the limitations in reality to actually constantly try to escape and just to achieve more of the limitation because since we are given to participate in, into these uh, limitations in reality, we better enjoy it because for a limitless being, it is very interesting to actually... <laughs> experience limitations wow what a interesting limitation i'm experiencing today in my reality it doesn't bother me it is not me it will not make me less limitless but i can actually observe and even 
enjoy it. Wow. So this is what the human beings are calling a problem. <laughs> this small limitation <laughs> from the perspective of a limitless person, and we call this a problem in this limitless reality. It is such a, a funny reality we are living in. <laughs> Well, ain't that the truth? Well, going back to what I said when I started first, each and every single day, my one of my main priorities and goals is to acquire, collect more evidence how divinely blessed beyond belief I am in my life. So going to that thing, I enjoy all the little things that life brings me because consciousness only functions where there is contrast. Mm. Our consciousness only perceives in contrast. If there's no contrast, we don't perceive anything. The moment you, you sit in a space where nothing changes, which is great for those who doubt what I'm saying right now, go and spend some time in a sens sensory deprivation chamber and see how weird it feels. Because our consciousness in this so-called passing of time that we're experiencing because this is just a something that's created it's not a reality there's no passing of time there is infinite duration that's the only reality but we experience it because we have memory and we can recall what happened in the prior moment and we can hopefully imagine what we want to happen in the next one we have this perception of time passing it's an illusion. There is no such thing. However, when we have this passing of time, we can create this contrast between whether the wall over there was darker before and now it's lighter, whether the temperature in the room that I am was warmer or colder, and so on and so on. But it, our perception, our consciousness only functions in contrast. And if we didn't have the limitations to use this, and the possibilities or the, let's put it this way, uh, the, the spectrum within which we, need, we can operate on this field, we will never be able to perceive anything. Because every time again, you have this three-dimensional reality space or canvas that our physical reality is playing upon, Everything's going to revolve between two extreme poles. It's the spectrum. And it's going to be, depending on where you're at right now in your experience, in the sense of perception through your sense that's coming in, you got to need the opposite prior to or after in order for you to feel like things are progressing, that time is moving, that things are changing. Otherwise, you like in that state that nothing changes, nothing moves, and it just is. And that's where it comes very helpful to really feel to a certain degree or have the experience on a very basic level of what you actually are. When you shut off all these senses or at least a lot of this constant stimulus and noise that comes out from the outside, not just noise in, in a sense of sound, but all this information that comes through the senses so you can get to that place of stillness, of silence, and you can really feel and get a taste of what you actually are, what your essence is, what the self actually is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I like... Uh we can maybe finish like this uh, of course we can continue talking with you for more than two three hours it's not yeah. a problem for us <laughs> <laughs> never never yes uh but for the audience and uh yeah uh thank you i think that the people that are listening in facebook or that can uh, watch uh, later the recording are going to enjoy and to understand that it's not about understanding even it's not about knowledge it's about everything that is coming beyond this. <laughs> well, understanding is, again, just uh, offer this little piece of, of wisdom. Understanding, again, we value or care about understanding and knowledge when we play in this field and we limit it again in this 
mortal human ego consciousness, which creates meaning, acquires information, gains experience, and so on by through the five senses. Mm -hmm. One of the fundamental, unchanging, unconditional feature of what we are, the self is, when you can tap into it, is this intuitive wisdom of knowing. It knows everything automatically. Whatever it focuses on, it knows. It doesn't need to acquire knowledge. It doesn't need to understand. It just knows. However, again, coming back to the conditioning, if you're being conditioned to operate in that state all your life, it's very hard to even pierce through the veil and understand how to do this, to start operating from this place mm -hmm. and to gain access to that field of infinite knowledge because all the knowledge prior, past, and future is already there. You don't need to learn. You don't need to understand. You don't need to do something. It's already there. We all have direct access to it. We just, to, to use another analogy, we, it's kind of like one of, we have created the storage room. And the thing we want is at the end of the storage room, but it's a very long hallway and we have all these boxes of crap, all these boxes of crap in the way. And we have to take all the boxes out and throw them away until we can reach to that point. Yeah. So in this sense, since uh, you are almost finishing your book, can we call it that it is going to be a so-called access book? To what well, is it's going to be. Yeah, it's, it, this is one way to put it. My book is called Superb. My upcoming book is Superb. And I highly uh, would love and recommend everybody that go check it out. Go to my website. It's Martin christophcom slash book. Then you can see what the book is all about. But the book is really about holistically transforming your way of being on this six dimensions that I've over the years I've discovered to be the most essential and fundamental and you can intentionally work upon and transform which first is the spiritual dimension working on the spiritual level next is the intuition then we go to the mind the emotions the body and we have the energy as well so all these dimensions how you can transform and in essence, gain access to these higher ways of operating and living your life on your own terms in the most little way, because from then on, you become a master of yourself, of all the processes that have happened within on the physiological, psychological, emotional level, energy level, and so on. So you can optimize yourself and become the way you want to be, or in other words, recondition yourself intentionally versus how you are based on your upbringing, which most of the time is not optimal. From my experience with working with clients, with coaching and so on, I never seen yet anyone who didn't have to do it intentionally once they realized that there's something was off. Yeah, thank you. It is uh, very great. And thank you for the participation in the Reality Talks with Alex. And I encourage everyone to uh, visit uh, the website it was uh, martinchristof.com slash book correct yeah well you can go to my website martinchristof.com yeah. but if if you want to find out more about the upcoming book and there's actually an exceptional offer i had at the moment for those who are, who are happy to pre-order it you're going to get the book you're going to get it in print you're going to get it as a digital download you're also going to get it as a uh, audiobook and <laughs> wait that's not there's more you're gonna get to participate in an online live group coaching with me where i'm gonna teach you actually how to put all these tools into practice the fundamental tools that you gonna that what i'm gonna how i like to express myself gonna allow to work out from the inside out or develop these non-physical dimensions of yourself so it is nothing like it's such a amazing offer i think it's a 30 some dollars or maybe 40 dollars at the most like it's a fucking no-brainer 
that, <laughs> like, so, so the book is a very small part of the experience that you are offering actually exactly the book is just the beginning it's where you begin it's it's basically it's it's the basics that you need it's the start it's how you're gonna install all these little apps that going down the path gonna propel you in that direction because i'm gonna give you the most stable foundation to build upon going forward because i've in the book i've share teach methodologies or techniques that are most universal and work with anyone regardless of their sex uh background religion and all these things they are universal once you implement these and you see how effective they are and how your life transforms in your quality of life and what your level of confidence of joy and peace and so on and energy and productivity and creativity whatever you you're looking for to enhance then you're going to start to ask what else is there and you can build upon mm -hmm. okay uh, thank you very much and thank you everyone for joining the today live and those of you that are going to watch it on um, the facebook and i'm stopping now the uh, live event on facebook i'm stopping the recording so bye bye from me thank you everyone thank you for tuning in and hopefully this was of great value to you yeah thank you i'm just